Hey everyone, Boomer here for Carvel Gaming, and today it's exciting times in the Hex TCG. Uh, we are moving into set three, Armies of Myth. It's taken a little bit of a while for it to come out, but there's a lot of quite exciting things happening. With me is Lee. Hello. And Lee will be going through a lot of the cards uh, with us. But first of all, we're going to go through what's going to happen a little bit in this patch. And the one thing I wanted to discuss in this particular video, we're going to spread it out a little bit across the set review. But what I wanted to discuss specifically in this review was this that's come up. For those of you who are on our channel for Hearthstone videos, which I presume is about 90% of you, maybe more. Um, Hex has taken, well I wouldn't say taken, but it's been a little bit inspired by the asynchronous tournaments that you get in Hearthstone. Otherwise known as the arena, for those of you who uh, don't understand what I'm on about. And Hex has introduced an asynchronous tournament. Or in fact, two of them, one for sealed and one for constructed. And what this means is you pay your entry fee like you do with the arena and or you do with the arena in Hearthstone. You pay your entry fee. You then play until you either win five games or lose three games. And that's your tournament. You can play at your own pace. It's best of one. And it can be done incredibly quickly. And personally... I think this is something that Hex has badly needed as it tries to expand into getting new players. Uh, I don't know what you feel about that, Lee. Yeah, it's, uh, it increases. It's very good news for us, especially, because, you know, we can stream it a lot better. Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing videos. that... That was what was badly going against Hex for streaming, was that there was just so much dead time if you were trying to stream a tournament. Uh, the other in the other interesting thing about the gauntlet is in bet you can't s you it's best of one, but you can have a set of reserves and swap them into your deck, yep. or in the case of sealed, build an entirely new deck out your other cards if you want to. Yep, and in between rounds. Yep, for those of you who actually saw the VIP tournament that I put up a while back, I did in fact have two separate decks. I could actually sideboard into two decks, and now you can do that in between games in a. Seal tournament, if you feel like it, or if you just want to test a card out, and at the end you just go, actually, no, this is really bad. I'm going to start. I'm going to try something differently, and you can do that with your constructed decks as well. You basically have a 75 card main deck of which you have to choose 60 cards. Now, if you want to swap a couple of things out, or you're not too sure on something, go ahead and do it. You know, you can absolutely do that. The prizes in the gauntlet are one pack per win up to five wins which uh if you get f apart from five wins where you get six packs as opposed to five and the tournaments are fairly good value i think that doing some rather complex calculations that i won't bore you with you need somewhere in the region of about a 47 to 48 percent win rate in order to go infinite in these tournaments which i think is fine yeah. Uh, um, seems absolutely fine to me. These come in two flavours, sealed, so you can open your packs, or constructed, so you can play constructed decks. I think another great thing about the constructed gauntlet is with the reserves but no sideboarding and no best of three, you can test a lot of the different things in the deck. I think it'd be a very good place for tuning and making decks. Yeah, for like tuning your final 60 before a tournament, I think that it's an amazing thing. Uh, there is something that those of you who uh, those of you who want to game the system occasionally might want to have a look at is that if you build a sealed deck, that deck stays with you. So, in fact, if you were to build a deck and then come back three years later after the set has rotated out, your sealed deck would still be legal. Now. I personally am not going to wait three years to play a game, but they did mention <laughs> on the forum that is exactly what could happen. So if set three happens to be overpowered, you get that, you get the chance to use it three years later. But I think that's going to be a bit of a fringe case on that front. But overall, I'm a big fan. I know there's been some bleating about the fact that it's get best of one. Um, I think they had to make it best of one, personally. Um 
The reason for that being is that the biggest argument against going best of three is against going best of one and keeping best of three is that they want to keep competitive tournaments. You know, they wanted it to be competitive and everything like that. Newsflash, guys, competitive tournaments aren't firing. You've got your chance. You know, if you want to play competitive tournaments, there's eight mans and 128 mans running every single day. They're not firing. So, therefore, why would you make another competitive tournament? It's like... Yeah, it's, they've got to bring in something new, haven't they? Yeah, for me, they've got generate to... Generate matches. Yeah, you've got to generate matches. You've got to generate interest. And at the end of the day, a draft... You know, if you get to the final of the draft, it's taken a good two and a half, three hours... If you're working a 10 hour, you know, if you're working for a living, you're doing an eight hour working day, probably an hour's travel either way, you could be looking, you know, and then coming home and it's like it's three hours to play in a tournament. It's like a lot of players, you know, unless you're super into the game, you don't want to do that. Whereas with a gauntlet, you can come home, play a couple of games and then come back to it later. You know, so I think that it's a, I think it's a super good idea. I really do. The other thing we should mention is the prices, because that might put people off, I think, a little bit. That might put people off. And this is always the risk that you have. Now, Hearthstone has a... Certainly for Arena, it has a low... It has a low risk, low reward uh, ratio, basically. Um, to enter an Arena is $1 for... You know, it's £1.49, $2, or like uh, 150 gold. And... You have, you know, you have to. The most you can get out of an arena usually is like four hundred gold, isn't it, for twelve wins? Or if you're Ribbo, you get two hundred and fifty. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, so it's low reward. Hex is more based on high risk, high reward. So the constructed tournaments, for example, are five hundred platinum to enter, which is equivalent to five dollars. However, you can win up to six packs, and six packs is currently worth twelve dollars. So you're still like over doubling your money if you get the highest record, but you're having you're having to risk more in the first place to do it. Uh, sealed tournaments cost fourteen hundred platinum, which is one thousand four hundred, uh, which is um, fourteen dollars. But the difference with that is that, number one, you get to keep the cards, so you're not actually paying $1,400. You're paying whatever $14, you know, whatever $14 minus the amount that you open in cards is, and then you're getting your prizes on top of that. So the initial outlay is definitely higher, but the rewards are higher for it as well. Um, it is an interesting debate to have because, obviously... Everyone knows the coin flip expected value. You know, if I if I say to you, I'm going to flip a coin and I'm going to pay you 60 pence every time it lands heads and you're going to pay me 40p every time it lands tails, you're going to take that bet off me every single day because it's a plus EV bet, yeah? Yeah. Now we do the same thing, except I say I will pay you... You know, now you have Roman Abramovich flipping the coin and he says, I will pay you £6 million every time it comes down heads and you pay me £4 million every time it comes down tails. And the answer to that game is no, because even though it's in your best interest to play the game, you don't have the bankroll to sustain that game. Yep. Uh, so, Hex, is de there's definitely a line to walk under that thing, but I think the problem is they've set boosters at being worth $2.00. You know, that, that has been set. So, therefore, unless they were to dramatically reduce the amount of prizes in the tournaments, they couldn't um, they couldn't lower the entry fee. Yeah. Is the, way that I'm, is the way that I'm looking at it from that thing. So, yes, you can't just look at it in the terms of expected value because you have to have a bankroll in the first place to... You know, you have to have the bankroll in the first place to sustain a run of bad variance. Because if you think about it, you have, uh, you know, even if you've got like a 50% win rate, you've got it something like a 12 and a, a 1 in 8 chance of going 0-3 in a sealed tournament. You do that yep. three times in a row, you flush $50. You know, that's pretty, that's pretty harsh. And that's definitely, all right, it's a little bit of an outlier to happen, but it's a two standard deviation field. So, you know, these things definitely happen. 
anyway, I think that we've spoken enough about the tournament. I personally think that it's a great thing. Yeah, I uh, love it as well. You'll be seeing us streaming it in the near future, I imagine, once I get through Hellfire Citadel. Yeah, the WoW patch came out, so Lee's been busy. Well, it comes out tomorrow, but no, busy, Lee. Yeah, whatever. Either way, busy. Anyway, so but what we're here to do, today we're going to go through the blood cards uh, of Hex Armies of Myth, and we're going to go through what we think of them in Limited and Constructed. Pre-warning, me and Boomer are not hyped on some of the cards that are massively hyped. Yeah, we we are definitely going to say when we think a card's been overhyped. Uh, first things first, we have Abominate. Now, we have gone through some of these cards before. However, uh, some of them have been changed. And we've actually played with them. On and the we've actually server. played with some of them. And second of all, some of them have been taken away, which we will discuss next time because I don't think Lee's stopped blubbering yet. Yeah. Um, we have managed to play with some of these cards on the test server as well, which has also led me to believe that certain things are stronger than they originally appeared to be. Well, first off, we've got Abominate, which is, as an additional cost to play this, sacrifice a troop, target troop gets plus three, plus three, and this is a permanent effect. I quite like it in draft. I picked up a couple in a Shinara deck, and it's it's fine. Can you even pl make Shinara in? Uh, well, you know what I mean. Set like three? small, small blood dudes. Yeah, I mean, and you can stick it on unblockable spiders as well, which is what I want to do. That's true. I mean, I think that in set, if this was in set one or set two, it would have been amazing, because there's a ton of things which put like a load of little battle hoppers into play. You know, this might see fringe constructive playing another card we're going to see later, which comes back from the grave. Yeah. Once a certain number of things have died, so you know if you got a couple of them going, this works the me mechanic to make it come back and makes it permanently bigger. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, I think for limited, I think it's very for limited. Ironically, it is very limited. I think you have to have a deck that it fits in. You have, you have to have the spider deck. I think one or two in the spider deck is fine. Yeah, I mean it's kind of. It's kind of why, I mean, we're going to get this out of the way. I don't really agree with arbitrary scores uh, when, it, you know, scoring a card based on its value because certainly in Limited, so much of it's subjective. Um, there yeah, this, are, card's, this, this card's obviously amazing. You know, lots of random dogs that you don't really care about. Yeah. Or, well, I guess they're not going to do set one and two with this. No, one. no. but, if, but you're, uh, if you're playing a control deck with only, like, 10 to 12 18. guys, you don't want this, you know. So it's... It's a role player, is basically the way I'd describe it. There are obviously some cards which are just nuts. Second up, we've got Arachnophobia. Create two Spiderling Eggs for each champion, put them into their deck, then each opposing champion chooses and discards two cards. For those of you who aren't familiar, there's the Spider Eggs. I do just want to point something out, Lee, because I don't think that we pointed this out before. Um, this... Yeah, it's very interesting cost, isn't it, with uh, yes. certain Inspire things? Yes, with certain with certain Inspire troops, I think that... Uh, I mean, you can obviously tell I've not got the steadiest hand here, but that is very, very worrying to me. Well, it's not... I'm more worried for something that you're probably not thinking about. Well, I'm probably not thinking about it at the moment, but I more than likely will. Uh, Ruby Pyro seems ridiculous with it. Yeah, that does seem a little bit naughty, doesn't it, really? Um... But you were thinking Mirror Knight because cards are good. Yeah, I was thinking Mirror Knight because cards and because spiders are general, generally in both uh, Sapphire and Blood. So they'd be the two colours that I'd look together. Are there, any, just... are there any Inspires in Blood? I don't know. Well, you play Ruby Pyro and Gore Feast with your spiders that are unblockable, right? There is that, yeah. Hey, deck ideas! And uh, the three drop... Oh, no. No, he doesn't work because he's a three drop. Never mind. Yeah. Um... I think this, it might see very fringe. Um, it's gash in limited unless you're playing against it's a very... If you're playing against a rampy type deck that's only got two big threats in its hand, yeah. it will see the same niche that Misfortune saw in set one. Yeah. Where you bring it in and take the two big threats after they've played the, the early game. Yeah, I mean, I think it's better than Misfortune in terms of... Um, it not costing five. It not costing five. It might see some reserve play of slower, dirtily control decks become a thing in... Constru I think Construct is going to get turned on its head by this set, so 
I think that we're going to have to wait and see a little bit, but it could be a card that we see in some reserves. Yep. Because I, you, I can you, see that. Yeah, you can just have sort of the withering touch, the Inquisition, the corpse fly this. You can just start shredding people's hands. Good luck playing combo. Yeah, that makes me sad. Next up, we have Bloat Cap. Some disturbing. They do. They do the disturbing art thing in this set. <laughs> He's just a teenager. Later on, when he grows up, he's going to be a dashing young female. <laughs> but when it dies, each opposing champion chooses and discards a card. Uh, I like this is another semi combo with uh, the abomination we saw earlier. I was getting wrecked by this card in limited. Yeah, because you just it trades for a card of yours anyway, so it's a one for one, and then some effect happens. Or I can think of things like Necessary Sacrifice, where you bin it and yeah. suddenly you're like, up oh, two cards. You know, if you can find a way to kill it on demand or buff its attack or whatever, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a top pick, but it's top class filler, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good filler card. Plus, with the sack a dude buff your guy hero, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately that won't happen in set 3 limited, because all the champions have to be from set 3. Uh, but... Oh, that was something I didn't know. No, 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 you have to you have to use set three champions in um, set three uh, draft. Uh, next up, we have Blood Pit Reaver six five rage two for six. At the start of your turn, destroy each troop with the lowest power. Very, very good uh, in limited, especially if you're playing against like swarm decks. Anything that's going wide. Yeah. Very good against. Um. The thing is, he seems like a little bit of a weird card to me. For one thing, he's an orc, so you'd think you'd want to play him in a swarm deck, but he's going to batter your own guys a lot of the time. Orcs a uh, curved deck in this set anyway, from what yeah. I was seeing. Yeah, fair enough. But in terms of constructed, I'm not really seeing it. No, he's, he's, you, you can do much better for six drops. For six drops, you can do much better. You basically have to be better than a dragon. Yeah. to be played and constructed and I don't think this guy is so and even the dragons only see limited play so not many six drops are getting played at the moment I think the format's a bit too tempo-y for it yeah he's just not that stellar and constructed play him in limited yeah. every time I'd, pick, I'd first pick him speaking of limited this guy feels like he's someone who could potentially go all the way in limited yep uh, I had a couple of them in the deck on the PTR and he's pretty pretty solid. Again nothing with big, nothing special. Again with a with abomination, this feels like he's just unblockable forever, pretty yeah. much if that happens. So again, you're looking at little combos happening. Uh this guy I think I think you're gonna take this guy fairly high. You're not gonna see him that often with him being uncommon. So I think that he's actually fairly important to have around. Yeah, I like him. He's like I said, he's just solid. Never going to play me constructively. No. And speaking of making a deal with the devil, here's Demon of Dusk. He, I am torn on this card. I don't know. He's a 5 mana 6-6 six, six with flight, which is absolutely enormous. Um, however, at the start of each opposing champion's turn, you create a Celestial of Dawn for that champion and put it in their deck. This is a Celestial of Dawn. It is a 6-6 six, six with flight. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to this by blood avatars. When you draw this, if an opposing champion has a blood avatar in any zone, play this for free. So even if it's in your graveyard, that guy's coming in. Yeah. However, if they don't draw it in like two turns, they're dead. Yeah, pretty much. I think Diamond has too many ways to remove it anyway. Yeah. Um, but having said that, though, you can cast the Celestial Dawn. That's interesting says play this for free oh so it's going to do the whole angel of dawn thing and just put itself into play because i was thinking if it was play it yeah. for free as in its cost becomes zero you can't play it still if you're in a diamond deck yep so but it looks it like it actually wasn't worded like that and people were like this card's amazing because people can never cast it yeah so i was like demon of dusk is the best thing ever um one thing that does go slightly against demon of dust triple um blood yeah. So you're really only going to see it in mono blood decks, but I suppose in that case, mono blood is probably best equipped for dealing with the avatar with the uh, celestial of dawn when she lands. Don't know. There's not that much removal. 
Well, I mean, I'm talking constructed here. You've got murder, uh, you've got all the rest of it. There's only, re- I mean, there's only really murder, I suppose, that will kill Celestial of Dawn. Uh, extinction, obviously, but that involves blowing up your own demon. A uh, dishonorable, dishonorable death. death yeah. Uh, the thing is, what's the likelihood that they're going to draw this thing? Well, I'm sure you've done the maths. Yes, I have, but I was just testing <laughs> you. Uh, you know, it's like the first one that you put into your opponent's deck. He's got like a one in forty chance of drawing it. So unless you're Boomer or River, you'll you'll be fine. Yeah, pretty much. So like if you're you in testing, you'll never. Know. I actually think it's a lot better than people are giving it credit for, just because it's huge. I think I play. I think I'd first pick it and play it in limited. Oh, absolutely, absolutely in limited. You play it and just run the risk. Uh, he's just he's basically. I'd take an aggressive. You know, you'd look to play an aggressive deck and just hit the damn thing. You know, just curve out, drop it on turn five, and say you have two turns to live. Thing is, if the Celestial of Dawn is on defense, it's blocking the Demon of Dust. Your other guys are getting through. Yeah. It'll be interesting, definitely. Uh, I think that it's one of those cards where it's like, the game has to end when you play it. Uh, because if your opponent's able to deal with it, then the Celestial of Dawn's going to come eventually. I think I'm just we- thinking of uh, the reveal the top cards of your deck. Like to say he's mastering in that into play. Oh, shush, 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 shush. That's coming later. Don't be spoiling things for people. Uh, Lee's very high on the wild cards in this set. Devouring Doomspore. We've seen this guy before. Pot- I think... Go ahead. Well, I think there's a, uh, a reasonable constructed deck around this guy. I mean, you can sack spiders to him. And it also hinges around the card I mentioned about with Abomination. I don't remember the name of, but we'll see it soon. He's going to be like a one or two of. Yeah. He's just fat. He is very, very fat, isn't he? And if you're sacking three guys, this guy's coming in for nine. (laughs) When he turns sideways, yeah. And that, you know, the thing is, it's like if you're playing him for free, you're going to have stuff up to be able to handle whatever your opponent's looking to do do with it. You know, you can inquisition him and make sure he doesn't have that repel. Or something you can also, uh, if you start reanimating this guy as well. Yeah. Then you're in for nine, or repel it. I was a fan I'll, of... I'll, I'll put my guy back into play, in for 11. Yeah. And he, the thing is, whenever he turns sideways, he becomes a 9-6 and he stays a 9-6. No, I mean, if you had Crush, it'd obviously be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, having said that, though, how much chump blocking gets done in Constructed? Well, if a nine power guy's attacking me quite a bit. You probably do chump block quite a bit, yeah, at that point. And he's not really that... Sus- he's Buccaneer and Time Ripple are good against him, but the increased cost doesn't really affect you. No. The other thing that I'm thinking about is I think that one of the directions they've gone in this set is making Buccaneer and Time Ripple less backbreaking. Uh, I really think they have um, tried. They, I think, with a lot of it, they've looked at the set and gone. Actually, those two cards uh, probably are a little bit better than we intended them to be. I mean, he's not a Reese, but this guy's probably decent enough to construct it. There's uh, not limited. If you put him into play on turn three or four, you're just winning. After, you <laughs> yeah. just smash, smash with your dudes. Put this guy into play on turn four, turn three, whatever, and they're like, uh, not sure how I deal with this if I'm not. Yeah. Like Diamond. I don't know if there is a way to deal with it outside of Diamond. Uh, next up, Disciple of Yakazam. Was this the one that this you were talking bunny, about? This is literally the bunny I am talking about. Yeah. 1-1 one, one with flight and speed. <laughs> Whenever another troop enters your graveyard, if this is in your graveyard, add a soul counter to it. At the start of your turn, if there are three or more soul counters on this and this is in your graveyard, put it into play and remove all soul counters from it. So he just, you never get rid of him, basically, unless you've got a Frost Wizard. Yeah, he just keeps uh, coming back. I, the original when I saw this guy, I thought he was very weak, but I was jamming some games on, like, with constructed decks. Yeah. And the guy had a deck with this in, and, like, the sacrifice effects, and things like, because you just play this guy, use the Shinari, sack a guy, buff a guy on him, and then he's got haste. He's yep. got speed. And then you hit them for four, three or four, or whatever it is. Yeah. And then... You add in like the monstrosity synergy and necessary sacrifice and dark spears and stuff like that. And he just becomes a very, very potent threat. There's also the uh, two-one tunneler, isn't there? There's also yeah. the one-one tunneler. Yeah, that from... in his deck as well. Yeah, so it's just like stuff refuses to go into Hawk the bin. That deck. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you'd think that with all the bunnies, you'd think they'd be okay with them dying. You know, it's like, stop yeah. coming back. Look look at his look at his cost as well. Yeah, two. <laughs> it's a good cost. So, Mirror Knight, Ruby Pyromancer, whatever you want to do with him. Yeah. I think this guy's... I don't know if he's a sleeper. I think a few people might have already thought about well, it. Well, he's not a sleeper anymore. He's not a sleeper point. anymore, sorry. Um... The only real way to turn him off is Zared, isn't it? Uh, Zared, well, permanent minuses, um, which is why you use the hero power straight away. Yeah. But also, you can use Frost Wizard and just void him. I mean, the thing is that we have seen, we've seen, I, I'm, I'm sure many people watching this have had the guy make the giant mosquito on turn one, and or on turn two, and then sacrifice his one drop on turn three, and suddenly he has a DIY Vampire King in play. And uh, that's been this guy that does is, this better. Yeah, that does this a lot better. At least that in that you can just blow it out uh, if you have a removal spell. With this, it's very difficult to blow out because he's just coming back. And think of the uh, the little mushroom dude that makes you discard cards as well. Yeah. yeah, there's plenty of stuff like that. And if he's got a mirror knight, he's discard. I draw a card, you discard a card. I mean, yeah, it's very silly. Next up, we got Duskwing Reclaimer. Which is one mana too expensive to be much good, I think. Yeah, if he was a 3-4, I'd be okay with it. I'd or... be all over it as 3-4. I just think that a 2-power flight guy shouldn't be costing 5. I think if he was a 4-2 as well, if you just swapped it. Hmm, probably. 4-power flyers are pretty just good. Just 4-power flyer that trades with Reese and Vampire Kings, yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, he might be okay. if you try. I've, I didn't try. Going five color on the PTR is on my list of to do stuff. <laughs> if I ever get the opportunity, I think there are better ways of doing it. Certainly for constructed, there's much better ways of doing it. For limited, I can see it happen if you really want to try and go five colors, but I think that's going to be very difficult to do. It's a pretty sick artwork, though. I do like it that. is a pretty sick. It's a big old bat, isn't it? So, what we reckon, he's never getting played in constructed unless we're very wrong on our evaluation of cards, and you probably shouldn't play him in. And I can see boarding him in against the I th player. Heavy I game. think he's a. I think he's a very limited role player. You know, it's like he, he does one thing and that's about it. He doesn't even do it very well. Not really. I mean, he does kill. Uh, he does get rid of the um, disciple. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll have to board him in against that. I think there's probably better ways of dealing with it, <laughs> but you know, needs must. Next up, egg blight afflictor. It's a two one for two that can't block. When it dies, create four spiderling eggs for each opposing champion and put them into their decks. As far as it went on the PTR, this guy said, I'm a 2-1 <coughs> unblockable. Yeah, pretty much. However, if you're playing against this card, just kill it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's fine. He's very good filler for the spider deck. Yeah. And he's a venom. So, yeah, he's got some triggers there. But I won't play him in Constructed. He's never getting played in Constructed, no, but... Next up is Emperor's Lackey. This is an interesting dude, I've got to admit. 4-4 four, four for 2, which is pretty good stats, really. At the start of your turn, it gets minus 1, minus 1, and you can sacrifice a troop to revert it. I think he goes in exactly the same deck as the flying speed guy. And the 2-1 guy yeah. who tunnels. and yeah, Feels like, like there is suicide a... Suicide Black, but the suiciding is your creatures. Yeah, your own creatures commit suicide. I mean, this guy can potentially be very scary. And the fact that you can sack a troop at instant speed for it, it's just like, my guy is suddenly 4-4. Four, four. Uh, what was the... It was 3-mana, wasn't it, the original Shinari in the first set, which turned into a 5-5 five, five if you sacrificed yeah. a guy. Yeah. This guy, I think, is just better. just because. I mean, number one, he's 2-mana, not 3. Uh, and second of all, he starts with high stats, so... I don't know, I think he's terrible, terrible, terrible limited. You think? Unless I think unless you need to get a very specific deck for him to be good. Yeah, I mean you don't really want to be bagging off creatures in limited. I mean you? you you can buy your spiders to him and stuff, but the stuff you'll take higher in the spiders deck than him. I mean I suppose he gums the ground up for at least two turns in the early game. I mean he's attacking on turn three as a three three, which yeah. seems really powerful. Yeah, that seems fine. Uh, it then depends what the rest of your deck has to do with it, basically. Because the thing is, don't forget, you can let it go down to a 1-1 one, one and then revert it. You know, you don't have to revert it every single turn. So it's all, a, lot of, a lot of these sets are all about synergy. 
Yeah, I mean, set two was very synergistic. Set one, there was the Dwarves deck, which was just dominant in limited. Um, so, yeah, you a lot of the drafting format is about finding what cards work well with the other cards. Uh, just drafting good dot deck often won't get you there. Next up, we have Exarch of the Egg. We're both very high on this card, aren't we? This guy yeah. is the best spider card. Uh, I think he's better than Falanto. Really? That's, yeah. uh, that's a controversial statement. We'll come up to Finito very not, shortly. Not for the spider synergies and stuff. I just think it's a better base card. I mean, number one, he's a two-mana one-three. Um, it's the lethal. Anything with lethal on the hex is utterly busted. Yeah. It's so hard to deal with. You just need a stagger. He goes, stop. Yeah, there's no way you're not getting a one-for-one one with this guy, at least. You know, your, your opponent cannot get rid of it for free. And you put the egg synergies on top of that, and he's pretty damn good. And yeah. he costs two. Exactly, yeah. I, I think this guy is very good. Constructed, not sure. It will really be. I think he's fine in constructed, if that deck's good, which we don't think it is. We don't think it is currently. But I think that if there is sort of an orcish aggro deck, or what, you know, like a super fast aggro deck, you might see this guy seeing play as just like a speed. A sideboard. Yeah. yeah, he's a speed bump. Who can potentially give you more speed bumps? Uh, also, again, because he's got a coming to play ability, uh, buccaneering him isn't really the best thing that you can do because you just put him back down, you get two more spiders, and you still can't attack with your buccaneer. So, I think he's pretty good. Next up, we've got Gem Soul Feeder. 2-2 two, two with Life Drain for 3, and it can shift Life Drain for 1. Uh, Again, good good limited filler. Yeah, it's a decent filler. Um, I would prefer it to have some sort of evasion, but this is one of the ones where... I think they've, there's five of these in the set where they put a basic ability that it can shift well, on it. Well, the thing is, it goes... It's a 3-drop 2-2, two, two, and then on turn <coughs> 4, he get, on turn 5, he gives you a 4-drop life drain. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I or think late game, he gives your biggest guy life drain. Yeah, he gives you like 6-6 six, six life drain or something. Uh, so yeah, he's decent. He's necrotic, which could mean something. We're not too sure yet. But I think he's okay. Life drain's a fairly powerful ability, certainly in limited. Um, many decks, certainly when you get to limited, they start running out of steam when they're doing twenty. When they're doing exactly twenty, so if you make them doing so, if you make them do so sort of twenty four to twenty six, that might be a little bit too far. Um, three mana for a two two, really not too sure on that. If it was two, I'd be all over this card. But yeah, it seems fine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, just good filler. He's not gonna set the world on fire. Yeah. Speaking of filler, giant spider spawn. This is Gash. Yeah. Like, never play this card. If you have to play this card, you should have drafted another player. But... It's like Assault Bot did see some play because it was a robot. Because it was an that... artifact, yeah. Yeah. But like Giant Spider Spawn, there's just got to be something better than playing a 4-drop, which trades with pretty much every 2-drop in the game. It's like... Yep. Next up, Grant's Gift. A constant, and this is one of the first cards we've seen which has a socket in it, which isn't a troop. Uh, it is a socketable major, which is definitely a thing, and transform target non-zombie troop in your graveyard into a zombie with all socketed powers of this and put it into play. A zombie is just a 2-2 two -two dork. This is a bomb, a limited bomb. Oh yeah, because you I just... I played it with the Sapphire Draw a Card gem. Oh. They just have to block all your zombies. Yeah, you just fight a war of attrition, don't you? You just end up... Because the thing... Oh, it's target non-zombie troop. I was thinking, God, if it was target troop, you'd just loop zombies. Um, also, this can be done at uh, quick speed, so you can do it at the end of your opponent's turn. Um, yeah, I think this is definitely a limited bomb. Construct... If you think of the other sockets, you can put flying in. It doesn't have to be major. You can put... Uh... Yeah, you can put flight in. You can put the one thing you can put in is the ruby gem, which punches your opponent in the yeah. face when it comes into play. Also, speed, speed. Can't you can also here's a good one for you. You put the uh, the wild gem in that gives pluses to things when it comes in. So your first one's a two two, then your second one comes in and makes the first one a four four. Yeah, then your next then one. You, you end up making four fours. Yeah. Seems potentially strong. You can also have spell shielded zombies if you so in, if you're so inclined. 
this uh, might be a good one in like I think it might see fringe sideboard play, reserve play, whatever you want to call it. As long as it's not side deck, I don't mind. Yeah. Not main board and side deck. No. Next up, Harvest of Sorrow. Draw a card for each of your troops that died this turn. Such a good song. Well, add an ER on the end of Harvest and it's a good song. That's about <laughs> all I've got to say about this card. Yeah, it doesn't seem... It seems like it requires such a very specific thing for it to work. If it cost one, it'd be bonkers. If yeah. it cost two, it'd be okay. But it cost three and you weren't leaving three mana up in any deck that cares about being extinction. Yeah, exactly. Um... I think that's probably about right. Next up, Hatchery Broodguard, six mana, four, five. When it enters play, creates six spider eggs and put them into their deck. Controversially, but I think from what I saw on the PTR, this is the best common for the spider egg deck. Mm. I think it's better than the hatchling guy that puts one in. Because it's a four or five body, it ends the game as well. And if you get the touch of Zenoth, then this guy's the guy you want to stick it on. Yeah, I mean... I think he's probably going to be someone who you're going to have to take high because he ain't looping. Um, he's a high, definitely a high pick common. Yeah. Uh, depends how slow the format is. I've got to admit, when I played against it, the one thing, the one thing I had against the Venom deck because everyone go, everyone tries to go Venom at the moment, and or tried on the test server to go Venom. The one thing when I played against the Venom deck, it seemed like they had a big time problem actually killing you. Yeah, and this guy, this guy. This gets guy's big enough to get the job done, because all the guys that they're making are like one threes, one fours, two fours. They're very defensive. They are very defensive. They've pushed it towards being a millish type deck, haven't they? Yeah, but the problem is there's very few actual mill cards, so a lot of it depends on you just hitting those spiders. And until you hit a critical mass of spiders, the odds that you're hitting a spider aren't that big of a deal. This guy helps you reach that critical mass very quickly. I mean, six is a lot. It is in a 40 card deck, especially. Well, it's not a 40 card deck at that point, is it? When well, it'll be like either. 27 card deck well, at that if point. Your yeah. I suppose if your spider deck's doing your job, it should be more than a 40 card. Well, yeah, how many did we get up to? I don't know. I couldn't see my deck. I'll get a deck counter. I think, and the thing is, when they were in your deck, they were all Terrarantula eggs as well. I think I put something like 800 Terrarantula deck, uh, eggs in Lee's deck. We were trying to break the servers. Hatchery, pr hatchery Priest, one mana, zero, two, exhaust it to create a spiderling egg for each opposing champion and put it into their decks. Another mid-tier. I'm not a huge fan. I think it's okay, but if someone drops this turn one and I'm playing a beatdown deck, I'm like, good luck with that. The thing is, it's very weird because you want to tap him in your turn before they draw. Yeah. So he doesn't block very well. No. So... I mean, admittedly, there's no resource cost for him to be used, but he feels very slow. And also, it's like, if you don't play this guy turn one, he is just gash. You are hoping to not draw it ever for the remainder of the game. Uh, I don't think he sees any constructive play at no. all. Next up is Incubate. Uh, you can pick these up really late, and they're fine. Mm. They're not big, they're not clever, they're just more good filler. I don't, I don't think they're that good. So it's, That's a good filler. The, the filler you will need to complete your spider deck because everyone decides to fight over it. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of had this discussion. I think we had this discussion a little bit in the um, first spoiler video we did, which was, I don't like paying mana and a card for something which doesn't affect the board. Yeah. And... It's okay when you're seeing guys like Exarch of the Egg and you're seeing even Hatchery Priest or a thing because they get rid of the innate card disadvantage by giving you a creature. It's why the prophecy yeah. creatures are good because you get a board presence and you get to screw around with your deck or your opponent's deck. Uh, incubate just puts stuff in your opponent's deck. It doesn't even make your opponent's draws worse because the Spidling Eggs allow you to draw a card once you draw them. Yeah. So... It doesn't make your opponent's deck any worse. It just gives you the chance of having a few one ones. I think the weird thing is that you get you pick them up late, but I think the more you get, the better they are. Yeah, I mean, they if, become average when you've got like I had six in one deck yeah. on the PTR, and I was quite happy. I did the whole turn one incubate, turn two double incubate. Yeah, and but, then I made relevant plays. It's like, but then all you need is the guy to miss for like four turns, and you're like, oh, I've mulliganed down to four cards. 
Rosen is good, but you yeah. will probably have to play a couple in your your deck. If you're, you're happy if you're not playing them. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's I not think the end of the world to play them. I think there's going to be so many people fighting over spiders initially. You might have to play it, but I would not be looking to play this in any deck. I was hoping I think, to go I three think it's and probably, out. With. You, it's fine, Philippa Sealed. I think you need well, that last. It's it's a. That's what it's called. It's a fortieth card for your deck. Fortieth is the yeah. Fortieth is definitely the word. Next up is Merciless Color. Now this isn't quite as good as we thought it would be first time around for reasons that will become apparent in uh, a couple of videos. But um, I again, th you remember that deck I've been talking about? That's yeah, like pre-built for you. Well, yeah, this guy's really good in that as well. Yeah, I, I would I imagine. I think he's a sideboard card. Yeah, he's against like the big fatty deck, isn't he? Um, I think this guy... Because the thing is, if you're looking at Constructed, the, for example, let's take the Mono Sapphire deck. The Mono Sapphire deck has a ton of shield guys in play before you can get to Reese. So it's like, I don't think this guy is good against that. He might be good against the sort of Ruby Diamond control deck, which just like makes a fat guy yeah, after I think he's a like, fat go, guy. They go, here's my Drew's Cross or Walker. You go, here's my Merciless Colour. Yeah. Your guy is dead. I mean, you don't even have to... If you sacrifice the colour, you're pretty happy with that anyway. Yeah, or they do the whole make my soul marble a guy and hit you for six. It's like, oh, I can, yeah, actually, I can actually kill your soul marble now. I think it's a very good sideboard card. Yeah. And I think it's the same in Limited. I think you will play this out of the reserves more than play it in your main. Yeah, it really depends if your opponent's got... If you one's fine, but you don't want to overstack them. Yeah, if you feel like you're in a trading game, you get to and you get to engineer a situation where you trade your worst guy for their best is what you're trying to engineer, but it might take a little bit of setting up. Next up, Mindrake. Mindrake has been changed since we last saw it. It's now nowhere near as good. Yeah, you don't get to attack as well. Yeah, it's like beforehand you used to just you used to go look at all my spiders. You discard your hand. Now I get to attack. Now you get to choose which one you want to do. Uh, I think it's unplayable in limited, and I we think tried in constructed and it wasn't very good. It was wasn't it? very good. No, I, mean, I think it's an, another okay cyborg card, but I think there's better options out there. Well, I think especially now, uh, you know, you've got the uh, you've got arachnophobia and things like that that you can put in the sideboard that I think are just better than. The... Occasionally, yes, you'll get five cards out of your opponent's hand, but if you if you're exhausting five creatures <laughs> to use this, you've already won. You know, you're, you're already five ahead. cards out of their hand. The... They're not playing them anyway because if they had counter magic and stuff, this wouldn't you have resolved. resolved. It. Yeah, this isn't going to resolve. So yeah, it, it's certainly not as strong as it was before. Next up, Necrofetch, uh, five three for five. Shift one. When this dies, put it into your hand. It gets cost plus two. This guy's okay. I'll. I wouldn't first pick him. I don't think. No. Nah. Limited, and I don't think I'd play him in Constructed. No, he's a little bit but expensive. For if, that. If, if you open it in your third pack and you're already in Blood and there's nothing bad, you know, you're, you're not upset to take him. I mean, I, I think a lot of it depends. Do you have a guy that you desperately always want to have him play? Like if, you have a, if he becomes better, the more bombs you have. Yeah, I mean, if I have like an Exarch, uh, an Exarch of the Egg or something like that, I'd be quite happy getting him back. Just play like the massive attrition game. It also depends on matchups as well. Like I don't, I think he's one of those things that Hex has where he's a mediocre rare. Yeah. Also, I think that this guy doesn't actually have that ability. It's like if we were to go back to, um, let's go back to. His I think gem. he does. No, it's Gem Soul Feeder. Have a look at the way Gem Soul Feeder's worded. It's Life Drain, and then basic one shot shift the Life Drain. Whereas on. Um, Necrofet, he doesn't have the text up here, he only has the shift. I'm not sure how that works. I, I think it works for him as well. If it does, it does. Uh, I've not it doesn't change much, it doesn't up the power level at all. No, I mean a 7 mana 5 3 isn't that harsh. <laughs> the thing is, Tessa here, if he was 3 5, this would be a lot better. Yeah. Uh, next up, Noxious Glory. You know this sacrifice deck, Lee? Yeah, I think <laughs> this is printed as a hoser for that and spiders. I mean, it might be a hoser, but it might go in it as well. Yeah, weirdly. Because it works with it, yeah. It works with it quite well. And it's good for the mirror as well. I think it's very good against a lot of the current 
constructed decks as well. Yeah, I mean, it blows out Mirror Knight and Buccaneers and Grolks and all that lot. It also it kills. Voids, which yeah. is the main thing. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem too good against like the blood decks that we're seeing now um, that came out in the last tournament. It doesn't seem great against that. It seems uh, really good against Dark Spears. Yeah, it's awesome against that, but that hasn't been a deck for a while. Um, it's also this card. This card is insane against robots. Yeah, uh, I think it's a very good sideboard card, and yeah, it'll be maybe a very not that weird deck to play limited. The thing is that you can always um, play around. I was thinking it's not that good against robots, and I'm like, well, you're playing Sorrow against robots as well. So combined with Sorrow, this will kill like Terrabot, Electroid, and everything else. Yeah, yeah I think it's so. good with uh, Zarad. Oh, definitely with Zarad. With Zarad, you can kill Vampire Zentos, Kings with it. Zento that's the, that's the sick one, isn't it? Make my Zentos Inquisitor, make your five power guy a two power guy, sack him with that just glory removed from the game. Yeah. Pick up my guy. Pick up my Inquisitor, yeah. I think it's fine. Uh, you'll probably see play. It's like, spoiler alert, Zentos Inquisitor is a good card. Yeah, indeed. We did not know this. Next up, Pain Breeder. This guy's awesome for the spider deck. When a spider ends limited, up, yeah. Just a bomb upon bombs if you're going in this deck. You just snap it the first time you see it. Whenever a spider enters play under your control, it gets plus one, plus one. Yeah, it's nuts. Well, so is it a spider itself, which is strange? It, it is, no, it's a Venom. The Venom are sort of spider worshipping like half breeds. It looks very uh, Dryder from from Dungeons and Dragons and the Drow and stuff. Yeah. Another lawsuit incoming. Oh, what wait, was that? Same company. Flavor Text say after murdering all of her children. That's a good start to Flavor Text. Uh, but yeah, that I think this guy's super good. Constructed, not really seeing it. Um, but limited, this is going to make it doubles your clock in limited, basically, because one one's. It's another scary. way of killing people in the spider deck instead of going. I poked you with a spider. Yeah, I poked you. One, one, one. Don't want to be doing that too much. Next up, Paraphagy. We've seen this one before. It's got nightmare fuel inducing artwork. Um, it's actually a spider. Let me just get the uh, let me just get the whiteboard back up here. Uh, there is actually a spider there, which were they actually did a. Um, they actually did a zoom in on that card and loads of people were like, what the hell? <laughs> they've, they've got very good artists working for them, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's a... It's it's unconditional removal, which is always going to be a high pick in limited. It's fine, limited. Yeah, I don't think it's good enough for constructive, but I think that for limited, it's a high pick card. Uh, unconditional removal is pretty much always good in limited. Um, the only doubt, the only one not being is like Immortal Decree because it's six, but then again, six is a lot more than five. Um, I don't think, I mean, the fact that it's basic as well is always a little bit, is yeah, going against it a little bit. But you ain't convincing me to do that. No, but uh, I'm definitely playing it in limit. The spider deck's slow enough and it can gum up the ground enough that I'm fine playing this. Um, because you're not playing this to try and make a tempo play, which I think is what I kind of had against Immortal Decree. Because it was sort of, I take up my entire turn just to kill one thing. Where this is, I'm going to take my turn to kill one thing, but I'm probably still going to have the ground defensively gummed. And all I'm looking to do is to survive until I get enough spiders out of your deck. So I think it fills that void a little bit better. Now then, Mr. Controversial, we've got Fentio the Blood Priest here. He creates Tarantula eggs. You, you say he which does are that. the which are these? You say he does that, but really he gets bounced. He does get bounced. Yeah. <laughs> he gets. But, uh, yeah, he's obviously bonkers. If, you, if this guy, you should probably first pick in a draft. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, probably first pick, as in snap first pick, and congratulate yourself on your three and zero. He's pretty good in constructed as well. How many car uh, how many ways are there to actually kill this thing in limited? Uh, he does die to Pride Spall because he's got four toughness. There is that, but and you he, know. So yeah. he basically dies to like one first pick common, 
and like some rares. Because <laughs> I think it's yes, he dies to paraphagy, but he's already done his damage by that point in time. So like, you've got six tarantulas in your deck by the time he dies to that. It's, it's fine. It's very good. Especially if you start doubling them with the Blood Brood Baron or whatever it's called. Yeah, I mean, I think... I am not convinced he will see play in an actual spider deck in Constructed. We think he's probably better in a... Like, the if you look at the mono blood control shells now... Yeah. Probably in one of those type things. Or yeah. in a Sapphire Blood deck that protects him in counter magic. Yeah, somewhere around those heads. Something like that, I think, rather than going... I think that's where spiders are going, to tell you the truth. I think that they're more than likely going to go into like a seriously deadly like Sapphire Blood control deck, or even Sapphire, Di you know, even Diamond Blood, whichever way you want to go. Um, I would not be playing Chronic Madness in this deck that people seem to be uh, hyping up. It feels very, very slow. That it feels incredibly slow. Um, when you consider the fact that Gore Feast is killing you, the turn that this is supposed to put Tarantulas in. Uh, your opponent's deck um, and also the fact that the sapphire decks are just going to be running counter magic convergent of ancient kings and you've got no way to stop them countering your chronic madness it's a i think there's a build which uses the better of the spiders card but i don't think as far as a tribe goes i don't think the spiders think you, work you play this guy you play the the shard and you play the exarch yeah um, we will be running through those at some point as well. Uh, certainly running through the shards, because I think the new shards are really good. Uh, which is sad. Yeah, which is sad because they're rare, but hey. Um, this guy, yeah, utter limited bomb. Uh, also named after one of the game designers, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, I don't think game designer, but... One of the he, community, will he, say. He works, like, he's on the team. He's on the team. I think he's the I would also like to uh, give a quick shout-out to uh, King Gabriel. Thank you for lending us... Some finitos, so we could test them on the uh, PTR as well. It's, it's Fentio. He'll get annoyed at you if you... <laughs> he might inject Tarantulas into the server for you. He ain't scared of no spiders. You've played Zarlox enough, huh? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I think that... I think the break-off point for Fentio is going to be like six. If you can get six Tarantulas in your opponent's deck... Then maybe something can happen. But you've got to think, why is Zarlok so annoying to play against? It's the Tarantulas. It's the Tarantulas, but it's also the fact he has four cards in his deck which say mill ten, draw two cards, this can't be countered. Yeah. And his hero ability says mill four, and he has spiders which mill four, and he has other cards that you don't have access to that mill five. You know. Oh, apparently he is unbeatable in his current form. Zarlok. On the PTR, yes, because he has this guy in his deck now as well. <laughs> and all the other spider stuff. And it's uh. just like, come at me, bro. <laughs> they might want to fix that. Uh, because you don't really want your um, Zarlocks to be end of run. Yeah, that does feel like it. Because he's 1-4, you can't beat through him with the Orc deck. Well, you can because the AI is stupid, but you get the idea. Next up, Prodigy of Volgsoth. I really want this guy to be good. He's a 5-4, man. For three. He's a 5-4 for 3, isn't he? Yeah. Essentially. Uh, essentially. And he's necrotic, so he turns on the necrotic shard as well. Yeah. I really think there is potential here. I don't know how fast you can get to 5 colours, though. Without having to play some seriously bad cards. Um, but Lixil is perfectly fine. She's necrotic. You've got the human that gives Ruby Wild or... Sorry, Ruby Sapphire or Diamond when she comes in. Uh, you've got the necrotic shard, which gives you a shard colour that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And there's also a certain artifact, which we will get to as well. So... Yeah, I can say it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Whether it's good, I'm not sure, but I think it's definitely possible. I, I think it, you got the three drop artifact guy that's just big. As yeah, well. he you is drop him and he's a four four. You're like, you don't even need the fifth one. You just like bring it, guys. You know what you're doing. Yeah, murder this. <laughs> Next up, profane ritualist. Um, 
One one for four flight. When another troop dies, this gets plus one plus one. He is good in limited. I got to play with him a little bit. He's better than he looks in limited. Well, I mean, a one one fly for blood. four is obviously under costed, but obviously over costed. But it's whenever another troop dies at all, and this includes your opponent. So you can just start making some. You know, you every time you chump block, this guy gets better. You what have he to actually be says is uh, the turn you play, my guys are unblockable. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Or don't think about attacking next turn, because if trades start happening, you die. He's also another good one with Abomination. It means he gets plus four, plus four. Ouch. Yeah, definitely. And then so, he's a, the 5-5, five five, which is the scary. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously for Constructed, he's competing with a certain Vampire King, so I don't think he's going to win that fight anytime soon. Um, but, no, limited, definitely can see it happening. Um, I, I won't say he's a high pick, but if you get the right deck and then open him in your third pack, I think you're happy to see the him. The problem is he's uncommon, so you're probably going to take him if you see him. Plus, it's amazing artwork. Yeah, it is. Everyone loves it. Are you going to extend it out, this bad boy, then? Am I? Which, well, I'm just going to sell it all on the auction house. Which, by the way, is, cards. Which, by the way, is another thing coming in set three. Which will be in our next spoiler video. Yep. Next up, we have Rockcast. This is your baby, isn't it? This is my baby. And there's a reason why I really like set three as well. One of the most dominant cards that we've seen is Cerulean Mirror Knight. Been a huge part of the meta game for ages. And one of the main <laughs> reasons for that is that you can't kill the damn thing before it does damage. Um, there's on Basically, Diamond has Repel. It's like, yeah, you're not attacking with it into two open mana. They printed Meek in set two. Uh, which suddenly you see the Blood Diamond decks playing because it's the only way to kill a Mirror Knight that early. Um, you've basically seen, before Blood came back in force, you actually saw the Mono Sapphire decks splitting off into Diamond and Ruby for the reason they wanted to win the Mirror Knight War. It wasn't even so much about the Reese War. It was the Mirror Knight War. Who yeah. can pop a cloud into after... The Mirror Knight hits the floor because then you have the cards to deal with Reese. Yeah. But what they've actually done with this set is now that is now in constructed every single colour has a way on two to get rid of to get a Mirror Knight off the board. Wow, that's the best one. Anyway, carry on. Wild's the best one, are you saying that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can also get alternate art ones, but don't say. You can actually get alternate arts of this as well. Uh, it's off the... I'm, I'm not sure quite what's going on in that picture. It looks a bit uh, buwacky to me. Well, a coyote is getting ripped, is getting shredded, it looks like, basically. Uh, getting something. You're anyway, getting I'll something. leave you guys yeah. to judge that. Yeah, but it's destroy target opposing troop with cost three or less. So, you know, running through the things it kills. Uh, Cloud Knight, it kills Living Totem, it kills Mirror Knight, it kills Buccaneer, it kills Ruby Pyromancer. It kills uh, Royal Falconer as well. No, it doesn't. Falconer costs four. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought it was power. No, it's... Herp, derp. Herp, derp. It uh, kills... Um, oh, what's it called? Lord Alexander, it kills Mentalist from the Gorefeast decks. It kills everything in the Gorefeast decks. Do you want to know the fun thing that this can kill as well? Usually Terrorbot. Yeah. So it's like this will end up killing its fair share of Terabots. It'll probably end up killing its fair share of Electroids and things like that. I actually think that uh, the robot deck took a big hit in this set. It did get that two drop though, but we'll look at that later. But we'll look at that later. But I actually think it took a beating in this deck off a lot of the cards. So that have what come do you reckon? Rockcast better than Murder? <sighs> Different place. I mean, the thing is, in set one, if any of you played in Alpha, there was this card called Persecute, which was. Two mana, target troop gets minus three, minus three this turn. And everyone bitched about it because it was too good. Because basically, with set one, blood had so much removal that there was no point playing a creature deck. So, Persecute got taken out of the set. Didn't they just go removal, 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 Uranus? Yeah. Get your guy. Removal, removal, removal. Yeah, it was basically removal every turn from turn two to turn six, then play Uranus. Uh, Rockcast, I think, is going to see a I lot of I think it's superb. Play. I think it's a constructed all-star. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, what I'm looking at it is it's 
Is it useless against any deck? Currently that we can think of. Well, you, you, including decks we've been testing? Well, you, even that. I mean, the thing is, it's like you look at Wild and you think maybe an Eye of Creation deck. Well, it's it, like, no, it it's, doesn't... He kills the ramp stuff in that. Yeah, it's but. like killing Howling Brave is actually a very big deal. You know, you're you're slowing your opponent down by a turn, which means that your extinctions are. I think the closer. big thing is is you ain't killing a uh, Indigo Dreamweaver with it. That is fairly big with it. Uh, it well, it, who well, who doesn't it kill that needs to kill? It doesn't kill Vampire King. It doesn't kill any of the power four drops. It doesn't kill. Dr it does kill um, Monsoon. Yeah. Um. You don't really want to kill the Dark Spell stuff. Think it it's, if it's bad against someone, it's. I think it's always got a target. Yeah, I mean, if it's bad against someone, like if you're playing against Mono Blood and all he's got is Corpse Flies, then yeah, board it out, and you know it's an easy board out at that point. But I think that it's gr the other thing is the Mono Blood deck could potentially struggle against the Artifact deck because now Mono Blood has to play for Murder, so you've got like the uh, you've got the thing that. You have to play four murder because of Reese, but you can't kill anything in that. I think it's at least deck, always so. a two of in your blood deck, unless you're only touching blood for murder. You probably want four between your main and your board. I think it's that good. I think they've been very clever with making it double blood thresh. Yeah, I think that's impressively well done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually lost a game to you in testing because I made the wrong shard turn one, which you know. That's something that will separate good players from bad players or players who are having an off day from... I mean, I'm horrible, but whatever. Um, you know, to be able to juggle your mana as much because Hex is very unforgiving on mana in the in the early game. Especially when you're going to be playing 8 coming to play tapped essentially shards now. And yeah, potentially. Stuff like that. And you've got threshold requirements for other shards. and Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It really is. Um... But I think this is a superb card. I really do, and this is this Pick up four as soon as it comes out. I think this was a card that I was severely that I was really waiting for Blood to have. Uh, the only slight problem is I hope it doesn't make Blood too dominant uh, because we did see six of the last top eight in the last. But the format shifts. You know, you could end up seeing a lot of Gorfies. Well, we've next. we've only been uh, we've only brewed five or six different bets so in far the, in the two days of the PTR. But yeah, which had nothing to do with anything that we've already seen. So yeah. there's going to be a lot of decks out there. They might all be crap. But yeah. You know. Next up is Shadowblade Assassin. Three three lethal for four. Shift lethal over. Anything with lethal in limited is amazing. Yeah. I was first and second picking this and sticking the lethal on my crappy one drop. Is there anything which is there any troop which deals damage to another troop? You know, uh, just there is in Ruby, isn't there? There's the uh Yes, there is. There is in Ruby. So like shift lethal onto it, kill that, kill that, kill I that. I didn't quite go that, that deep, but you know. Yeah, if you go Ruby you're probably going wild you with can, it. Can you is each or oh, shift you can't do it in response to fighting, can you? No, it's basic. Oh. Well, yeah, this guy's a limited all star. Uh, be happy to have him. Yeah. Crapping constructed because he costs four and he's a three three and he's not Reese Van Viking. Bloody 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 yeah. usual arguments. Yeah, but I think that he's uh, properly, properly good in limited. Next up, suddenly awakened. Rubbish. Really, even as a quick action. Yeah, I just think it's rubbish. Hmm. I'm thinking there are potentially ways. I mean, it's to... okay against extinction, but you know, there are better things against monsoons. Better against extinction. I'd rather just don't them discard extinction, but yeah. Yeah, um, I th it might be useful in a, like a comboy deck of some description that I haven't thought of yet. Um, you know, to like sacrifice something, put it in play again. If, the, if there was a troop seven. that said sacrifice this troop, draw three, you'd play that. Yeah. It? Like you X Oracle exists in like Yeah, it's like if there are creatures with really good sacrifice effects, we'd play those. Uh next up, Taint. Target troop gets minus one, minus one. Good limited filler, it's fine. Yeah. Don't think it'll see constructive. Reverse you've, bravery. You've got sorrow for limited. For constructive. Next up, this is the uh, true test of whether spiders are good or not. You've got touch of Zentoth. See, when I originally read this, I thought, oh my god, this card is busted. Then I read this turn. <laughs> yeah. So you're playing this in your spider deck with, like, one and two power. And, yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah, I, 
I really don't think it's a... This is one of the cards which has got super, like, huge hype. And I'm not really buying there's other, into there's it. There's other two-cost actions you can play that are better. I mean, making a guy unblockable is fine. Um, but... Yeah. There's the uh, the Ruby one, though, that does gives it crush and plus whatever and does double damage and stuff. I mean, I can see it being played on, like, the one huge guy for sure, but... I think that, you know... But if you're, you're hitting with a huge guy, why do you need to put spiders in the deck? Well, no, I'm thinking about making your huge guy unblockable, like if they've got a wall up or something like that. But, yeah, I I think that... I got a draft with four of them in. They were rubbish. All right, I got a draft with two of them in. They were rubbish. <laughs> so there you go. Lee, Lee's opinion is rubbish. Uh, I have to say I'm not... You know, the fact it says this turn at the end of it, Really, uh, well, the only time it's good is when you play two on like a four power guy and you gotta have eight spiders, yeah. And even then, yeah. Next up, Untamed Dustwing one two with flight for two, decent filler, especially. I, and that's it's a very good filler for the sacrifice deck. In limited, I think it's gash, but well, you can it's just an evasion monster on two that you can abomination onto and then just kill them. Stormcrow, dude, yeah, yeah Stormcrow's amazing. <laughs> There is worse filler in this set than that. Van Pegasus, 5-5 five, five for 3, sacrifice a troop, it gets see. flying. <laughs> it gets flavor points, though, surely. It's an amazing, amazing artwork again. Yeah. It gets a lot of flavor points. Looks like it's in a, where it is in the screen, looks like it's just about to have a fight with Uranus. I think Something Ur we haven't managed to do yet. No, I think Uranus wins. Yeah, that's something I definitely have. I have done. Oh, God. I am not kidding. I have played over 3,000 games in the arena and I have not seen Uranaz yet. Funny thing is, it's like uh, I'm just waiting for someone to alter the art to be Donkey out of Shrek. I'm a flying donkey! <laughs> yeah. Because I, uh, you know, I, and for those of you who think I'm exaggerating, I have got four of every alternate art card. That is 600,000 gold, which means I have been through the arena at least 100 times just doing that. Now, when you take into account, I probably had 100 arena runs in me before I did that. I think that 3,000 games is probably about an accurate estimate. And I have not seen this bastard yet. Hate my life. Next up, Vampiric Princess, Vampiric Kiss. Brilliant. Constructed All-Star. Yeah, absolutely great. Uh, and limited All-Star. Limited All-Star as well. Just Life because Drake it's good enough. Yeah. And... Two, three, life drain flight. I, I'm concerned that she dies to literally everything, but... If she doesn't, then, you know. Yeah, I mean, the thing I was... I've seen some people saying, finally, we've got a replacement for corpse flight. I think they do different things. Yeah. Um, I this don't is think... More in a, uh, this is a better tempo card, I think, than corpse flight. Yeah. But I think that corpse flight also serves a very useful purpose. Um... So I think you actually play them together. I don't think you play them as an instant. I, I want to play her in the uh, Shinari Sacrifice deck as well because you just go, I made my guy. I killed my random spot and then give my guy plus and she's got life drain. Yeah, and Vampiric Kiss isn't terrible either. So it's a free card if you hit right. Yeah, and, it and if you've got her in your opening hand, it's bonkers. Yeah, it's like naught kill that. I think Vampiric Kiss is also just a card, isn't it? So I think so. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Absolutely fine to me. Um, if she was, like, you know, if she was legendary in 3-4, you know, would she be better than Vampire King? We don't know. If she cost 3, yes. Yeah. Well, if she cost 3, she'd obviously be better than Vampire King. <laughs> Next up, we have Vicious Vivisector. Venom Allegiance. When it enters to play, bury the top 3 cards of each opposing champion's deck, and it's a 3-5 five for 5. It's fine in the spider deck in limited. Another defensive guy. Yeah. That's the one problem I have with the spider deck is that there's so much defensive guys and it feels like if you can't get absolute control over the board, you will eventually lose. Um, obviously, the nut spider deck is insane, but I think that a bad spider deck isn't going to get you it's, anywhere. It's like if you... I think the spider deck is probably going to be very similar to the mill deck that exists in... Uh, set two. Set two. Yeah, if you get the nuts mill deck, you just three in it. But if you get a bad mill deck, you're going out round one. I mean, I, 
I want you know I've won a few drafts where I've gone like turn three dementia days, he's turn four dementia yeah. days, he's milled you know, four cards, uh, yeah. Mill's my bane, so it, yeah. Yeah, Millie's Lee's least favorite thing. He always loses to it, no matter what. Next up, we have Vilefang M. Eremite. Is that how you pronounce that? One four. When a spider enters play under your control, it deals one damage to each opposing champion. Gain health equal to the damage dealt this way. It's another way to kill someone in spiders. It's fine. It keeps you alive. It's a very another. Very it works with the spiders. One. With the spider thing of doing the spider thing of doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, the spider thing of doing absolutely nothing. You are basically just playing wall dot deck, aren't you, with spiders? Now, quick disclaimer, we're not just saying we don't like the spider deck, blah, blah, blah. We have tried, like, three or four versions of it. I've tried it in draft and things. Yeah. This is actual... I mean, there was there was, a, there was a build of it that was put up, I think, recently on Hex Primal. We literally built that deck, and I got stomped quite heavily. Uh, I, I had four drafts, I think, with it. I won two of them because I got the nuts I also want a sealed because I got the nuts with it and yeah. the other ones I just got utterly battered yeah I mean I played a sealed gauntlet I went not spiders because I didn't have them my first three opponents were spiders and I battered all of them and it was only the time when someone who came up who wasn't spiders where I actually started getting a game and it wasn't because my deck was insane um, so but again, it was like someone going, I am going spiders no matter what, and just playing a bad spiders deck. I mean, I forced it four times in draft and got yeah. lucky with it like twice. Yeah. Next up, we've got Warlord of somewhere. A tier, I think. Sacrifice another troop, it gets plus two, plus two this turn, and it can shift the ability. I think he's fine limited filler. It's better than the set one version. You think? Yes. Hmm. I actually you give it to an evasion creature then, can't you? With the yeah, you can. And you can at that point just go all in and just go like you know if you're if you're in a situation where you can't win the ground war, you can just go all in and win in the air. So there is that. I think the shift ability is what makes this guy playable. Yeah. If he was, he's one of the good shift guys. Well, the problem is you are left with a three mana one one, which is a bit pipe. Well, you just sack it to the other guy. And finally for blood, we have Zealous Excruciator, uh, which has a lot of text. It's a five mana venom, which is five four. When it enters play, each opposing champion chooses pain or suffering. Then these champions reveal two random cards from their hand. And if they chose pain, they deal take damage equal to the revealed card's costs, which hurts a lot. And if they chose Suffering, they discard the two cards. I think he's a good sideboard card for Constructed. The I mean, this, this guy is what Blood plays against the Ramp decks. The only thing that I would say is that whenever you give your opponent a choice, the card tends to be a lot weaker than it seems. Uh, because... It's t I mean, the thing is, first off, it's two random cards, which makes it a lot better. If it was two, um, if it was two cards of choice, I think this card would be bad. Uh, but because it's random, I actually think this card can potentially be backbreaking. Um, so yeah, I. But again, he's one of these creatures. Like maybe there is sort of a discard deck because now you've got Withering Touch, you've got Inquisition, you've got Corpse Fly, you've got Vampire Princess, you've got the uh, other, you've got the uh, what's it called, Arachnophobia, and you've got this guy as well. Your hand can come under very serious attack from this deck, from like Blood now. So. Yeah, you're mate. one top deck away from losing, aren't you? At that point? Well, you always are with blood. That's the problem with discard. You know, I mean, you've played you've played combo decks in Legacy, and you've played Magic for long enough to know that you can have all the discard in the world, but your opponent's top, the top of your opponent's deck is something you can't control. Yeah, there's uh, many stories, but we're getting on. We are getting on, and I think that we have uh, gone as far as we need to do for our first video here. So that is the blood cards. The next video we will be with you will be the diamond cards. But 
Overall for Blood, I think there were some very strong cards there. I think that there are some cards which are weaker than we first appeared once we finally got to play with them. Uh, because don't forget, you can't just take the value of a card based on its face value. You know, like what its text says. What its text says. Because if every other card's in the... Everything's relative. If every other card in the uh, metagame's stronger, it just doesn't fit in the metagame. It's not a good card. Uh, this is kind of what was getting to me when I was seeing, like, you know, Master Moss is still 1,500 platinum on the exchange it's like there hasn't been a master moss in a top eight deck or a in a top eight deck or in a four and oh vip deck for like four months and it's still 1500 platinum yeah i wish i got lower so i can put it in a top eight of a VIP. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have your you have your wishes don't you anyway guys that's it for this video let us know what you think in the comments and uh, let us know if you agree with us, disagree with us, share what uh, your experience is on the test server with, and uh, we'll see you next time for part two. See you then, Bye guys. Now.